Hey everybody, welcome back to The Garage, and today we are doing a follow-up on a video that I did a couple days ago where we talked about issues in timing. In particular, I had a patron reach out to me, and he had some timing issues on his truck. It turns out they were all linked back to running 87 octane gas, but we touched on some different things that you can look at to make sure that you are getting your optimal timing, you're reaching your at least your base timing, and... I will post a link up in the corner to that video, so make sure you click on that. That being said, if you find this video or any of the other videos uh, helpful, do me a favor, throw that thumbs up out there. That is the form of payment that you guys give me for making this content. I appreciate it, and that also gives me confidence in knowing that I am giving you guys the kind of content that you're enjoying. That also being said, if you have not subscribed already, hit the button down in the corner, ring that bell if you want to get notifications, and there's always the Patreon down in the description. But let's take a look at what we're talking about. As I said, uh, last, uh, I don't know, maybe last week or so, we had a guy come in. He was getting some very serious uh, timing reduction. And let's jump over, take a look, and this is a log that he brought in. You can see, uh, in particular... Uh, in this area down here in the 10,000 to 1,600 range, he had a lot of timing and up coming out that you were pulling about four degrees of timing out of his base map. Uh, along with everything else that was going, it was lowering down the advance quite a bit. And so you're seeing five, uh, six degrees of timing in there. And we kind of traced it back as one of the primary uh, causes of this situation was 87 octane which was a good example of why running something like 93 octane will actually give you more power. There's an old wives tale going around that says that running 90, 93 octane won't help. You know, it helps with detonation resistance, you know, to, to keep ping and knock from happening. But this is a prime example that actually running 93 octane can get more power because you can run more timing. This is the ECU automatically pulling timing out because of detection of knock because of the low octane and so normally i would say hey just run 93 but this particular gentleman has been getting 87 for free so it's hard to justify whenever you're getting two three hundred dollars of free gas every month so what are some of the other options that we can do well methanol injection might be one way of doing it if we were to set up something on a throttle trigger on methanol injection when you get into wide open throttle uh that should uh, you know, provide the additional uh, cool air and octane rating to keep you out of knock. So in this situation, though, he went with octane booster. Once again, getting $300 of free gas in a month and then having to spend $30 on some octane booster every month might be the way to go. So if we jump over and look, he sent in another log recently with some octane booster uh, I believe he was six ounces to six gallons right now. So an ounce to a gallon may not, I mean, that's probably the recommended. And I think that he was using a uh, turbo 108 octane booster. Uh, you can see uh, in particular in this range that we were talking about the, the uh, 1400 to 1800 RPMs. He actually picked up about two degrees of timing. Uh, once again, here's kind of 12, 14, 16, 18. He's running 6 degrees up to 8 degrees. And then with the Octane Booster, he was getting, you know, 6, 7, 8, even up to 13 degrees, 12 degrees higher up. Uh, you got to keep in mind where he was at on the air mass area. So at 5,200 versus 5,200 here. So he was able to pick up 1 or 2 degrees of uh timing just off of running octane booster so suddenly octane booster kind of becomes a legitimate uh solution to timing knock but it's not going to be a solution for everybody obviously i would not suggest going out and paying for 87 octane and then using octane booster uh you know but at the same time if you are running 93 octane and you might be having some knock issues or some timing pullback uh, that you can then attribute to uh, gas octane stuff. Octane booster might help to kind of get you over the hump on that same uh, same kind of situation. So I know there's a lot of different products out there. I personally only have very little uh, experience with 
uh, some of the, you know, off-the-shelf brands you see everywhere, the STPs and stuff like that. And that's back in the day where it was, you know, the mentality of, oh, we'll just throw Octane Booster in here because that means more horsepower. But uh, in this situation, it actually does mean more horsepower. But going back, as I said, my solution to something like this, if you were to be able to get uh, free gas every month in this kind of situation, I would look at doing methanol injection. So $300 is how much you're saving in a month. In about two months, you could pay for an AEM methanol injection kit. I'll put the one that I use down below in the description. And then you could run windshield wiper fluid. And instead of running it off of a map sensor like you do on a boosted application, you could try and run it off of, I believe they've got one that runs off of an RPM. It's got a RPM pickup sensor that you can then activate it at a certain RPM. And in this situation, maybe you could figure out a way of doing a pressure trigger that whenever you get over a certain air mass or something, uh, that's whenever you start getting into it. To be honest with you though, the area that he is having the most issue isn't really an area where you're doing a lot of tuning. That's more of an area of whenever you are getting into it from a stop, uh, that's whenever you're going wide open throttle from idle, that's where he's getting into the most knock. So, but that's kind of an interesting uh, thing to look at. It was interesting to see the before and the after, to see the reduced numbers. Uh, if we look at the actual knock uh, table, you can see for the most part that, look at all that. Look at the stuff up in that region, the 2200. See, a lot of that cleared up. I'm not sure what's going on in the 3200 range. That really wasn't there beforehand, uh, but I would have to go back and check to see if he had done anything else to the tune. But this area, this big area right here, definitely picked up a lot more timing so same ordeal if we were to go into the 2400 range and look through here we're seeing 19 on the low end up to 25 uh 2400 yeah so we're getting down into 15 degrees 13 degrees 16 17 so you know as i said uh, kind of across the spectrum it's looked like he has been able to pick up two three sometimes even four degrees of timing so uh yeah very interesting to see you know this is a real world application we can kind of look at some other things uh intake temps aren't that much further off uh it's a little bit warmer on that day but eh, not so much if you look whatever he gets going it gets down to 90 so they're about the same, 93, 91. Intake temps are about the same. That's the big one that will pull timing out. So we literally are, should just be looking at a one-to-one -one kind of comparison of before Octane Booster and after Octane Booster. So cool. Good information out there. Hopefully you guys found this uh, useful. We're going to have a lot more videos coming out here in the next couple of days. So make sure and stick around. If you haven't subscribed, once again, hit that subscribe, hit that like. Got any questions, hit up the comments. If you have any uh, preferred uh, Octane boosters that you've ran in the past, put them down below. I'll let this guy know. Maybe uh, he can find something that works a little bit better and he can pick up five or six uh, degrees instead of three or four. Who knows? Uh, but, you know, pretty cool. Pretty cool. So, once again, I want to thank everybody for stopping by the garage.